Hello everyone. Today we will discuss situation when we need to display Salesforce data on the external website. So generic way or the basic way how it usually could be done, it's for example, we have an external website. We are doing cloud to the standard Salesforce API. Based on this API, we are getting information from some object and returning it back as a part of the response to the website. And then website uses uh, response to be able to draw some kind of UI on the website. Uh, let's say it's working okay if we need to expose one object to the Salesforce website. But when we have tons of different objects, uh, the situation will be in the following that each time when we will promote, let's say, a call from the website to Salesforce, right? So then it will be one call into one standard API to get object one, another call to object two, another call to get record for object three. And in that case, we will use um, certain amount of uh, requests to be able to grab the data. But the problem is that in Salesforce we have limits. And at this moment, in terms of the limits, if you will go to the company information page in the sidebar uh, menu, we will be able to find that here we have a limitation how many API requests we could perform in 24 hours. Like for example, for my dev environment, it's the following number. And in addition to that, we have a limitation around the API requests per month. So we could see what kind of number we have. So that means that if in our organization we have a couple of integrations, for example, different websites or synchronization or things like this, when we design in a new approach for, you know, like next integration, we need to understand if it will bring some additional volume and if we could potentially hit those limits. So there also could be a different situation when we could uh, change our way of integration with some middleware. So for example, what we could do is uh, on that middleware, we could have a caching mechanism and that caching, <coughs> caching mechanism, what it could do, it could grab information from Salesforce, right? And for example, store it in a cache for a couple of hours. For example, in that case, each time one site will make a similar request, uh, if middleware will see that that request was already done, then what it will do, it will just return data back based on what it's already have in the cache. And in that case, we will reduce the number of callouts into uh, Salesforce. Another possible way that we could do, um, it's we could actually use uh, another approach in when we will have in our middleware or for example, in the site, when we will have uh, some database. And that database will exactly, let's say, grab the data from Salesforce uh, via change data capture. Like, for example, if object one is changed or a new record is created, then we will run through the change data capture uh, cloud, which will be run into uh, middleware, right? And we'll save this update in the middleware, right? But again, we will still use clouds to make those updates, right? And each time we are using, um, let's say, API limit. If there was, let's say, unbound limits, then there will be inbound request and situation is repeating. And, you know, like if you have a couple of objects, then, you know, like always when we're requesting that information from the site, we are getting, you know, like a certain amount of um, requests to be able to grab the data. So one of options also here is in the following. If you will prepare a custom API, or for example, if we are using Omni Studio, we could prepare integration procedure and we could include all of necessary objects. Like for example, in our case, it could be all three objects as a part of the same API. So that means that when a website will request the data and we will need to show it, for example, on one page, it will be only one payload that we return back. So there will be no three callouts. So there will be one callout to get payload. So we will reduce the number of callouts. But if you will think how we could avoid entirely the number of callouts, and for example, if we already, you know, like near with our value with the current world integration, right, and we don't want to produce a new API request. So what is the way that we could use for us to still build that um, functionality, right, but for example, not to use API calls? Uh, we could use uh, another possible uh, implementation way. It's when we will expose those objects directly to the external website through one of the following technique. Uh, it's, for example, Omni out. It's when we, for example, use flex cards uh, on our Salesforce org. It could be lightning out it's if we are using LVC, right? Or it could be iframe. 
So let us uh, take closer look into that um, possible solution. Like for example, to do so, what could be done? It's I am at this moment would like to expose some data to external website. And for example, I could do it in the following uh, manner. So I am going to the community. And in the community settings, uh, I'm making sure that I allow uh, framing of what I have uh, in my Salesforce Oracle. Like for example, in that setting, I'm allowing uh, framing on external domains with a good protection, you could see. So then what I need to do is I need to add trusted domain, like what kind of domain I am allowed to iframe uh, my pages from that community. And also uh, I will need to make sure that, um, let's say if I would like to this uh, community be available through the guest users, right, without any kind of additional authentication. So I will need to make sure that this specific checkbox is set here. So in that case, uh, what I could do next, it's for example, in my case, I downloaded uh, from the open source LVC Lightning Database component. So it's uh, really flexible. We could specify the uh, title of the table. We could specify what kind of object uh, we would like to use. So for example, we could use account object. Uh, we could use uh, any other kind of object. So for example, in my case, I need to use standard object incident. Here I'm specifying comma separated list of fields that I would like to show. Also there are a possibility to show related fields, uh, related fields API, formula image field and, and so on and so forth. Uh, possibility for us to hide or unhide checkbox column. And there we have a possibility to show the number of records near with a table here, show you all or collapse button and enable disable pagination. So at this moment I have it enabled. And there are also possibility for us to control the search if you would like to um, enable that search or if we would like to disable that search. So it's, let's say, a flexible component if we would like quickly to expose something. And here also you could see actions. So those actions we could just grab from the actual object. If some action is available for that object, then we could automatically expose uh, those actions here. But uh, please note that, for example, for this specific um, object incident at this moment, the trouble is in the following, that incident object is not supported via community. So that's why we will get some, some troubles with the button when we will click on it. So Salesforce will let us know that it's not supported. But anyway, for any other kind of object, you know, like it's a very quick way to build something. And then, you know, like we have that uh, additional pagination. Uh, so let's say once it's done, right, um, and we have community setup, let us just see what kind of number of API limits we have at this moment. So you could see at this moment I have a zero. And at this moment, um, what I did is I actually go to the Google website, right? So you could see that uh, it's actually Google Google website. And what I did, um, it's at the top of that page, I have included my iframe. And my iframe already contains my LVC component from Salesforce, or actually it contains a page that I am unframing. So if I will show you the code, uh, you will be able to see that what I did is I actually added a frame and in SRC attribute, I just specified my um, community website page URL. So that means that at this moment I have that page and that page exactly showing up from Salesforce in that a frame, right? So I just added it, you know, like in online version. And so what next I could do, I could test that, you know, like my pagination is working, you know, like it's look like, you know, like there are no, no troubles, right? So, uh, okay. So it's, <laughs> it's an issue of the actual, um, of the actual LVC component. So it's, there are no, no troubles with the actual integration of iframe. Um, so what I would like to show you next, it's what's exactly happening when we actually interact with this specific component. So when we, for example, clicking on the next, uh, you could see that some, uh, let's say, request is happening. And as a part of this request, right, we could see that it's using our Apex section execution, right, and it's, use the following like a method, get records, it's 
perform SQL query, right? We could see that it's grabbing that uh, from specific object with security enforced and all this stuff, right? So that means that at this moment, that logic performs the actual API call, right? Grabbing data from the backend. But if we will jump back into our company information and when we will refresh the page, you will see that we're actually not using any kind of API requests. So that means that, you know, like it's um, another way how we could uh, show our data on external website, right? Uh, so it will already be built based on what we have in Salesforce. So that means that, you know, like we could only once build a UI on Salesforce and we could use it in Salesforce community, for example, and on external website. So it will allow us to have, let's say, similar or standards uh, around how our UI look like. And in that case, we are not using um, API clouds, right? So we're just using a frame. We specify it uh, community settings for uh, for our page. If you remember, with uh, allowing a framing and with a trusted domain. So at this moment, uh, it's let's say another way, and um, also we have here as those additional two options. It's Omni Out or Lightning Out. So uh, about Omni Out, um, so you will be able to use it uh, if you have in use uh, flex cards. So for example, when you use a data raptor uh, to grab data from the backend side and exposing it via flex cards. So in that case, you could use uh, Omni Out, right? And then you will be able to build your or integrate your um, generated LVC component, right? Directly on the external website through this, uh, let's say, technique. Um, without you know like this additional layer with the community but with the community good things that we have it's we have a possibility to specify permissions for our guest users and so when we're doing so uh, we could specify access to what epics classes we have for example if you have backend Apex controller we could specify what kind of access to objects we have so all this kind of stuff could be done uh, for um, that profile that we have in use for our community uh, sometimes uh, that profile that we have in use for our community could be different uh, with our community that we're using for all our purposes. So that means that we could create another community, right? At this moment, if I remember correctly, we could create up to 100 of communities per environment, right? And on this community, it could be some kind of, let's say, guest user community. And we could expose through it all of kind of necessary pages. And then, you know, like use that technique um, to show it on the website. So at this moment at all, if you guys will see that, you know, like there are some additional ways, please feel free to post it into the comments. It will be great to have a collaboration about that. And thank you for your time and attention.